Hello, I'd like to talk about the magical tool that is the broom. Now, the broom is a very interesting magical tool um, because it's an everyday, or it was, the, it was an everyday household item and there's a tradition that people would have made all their tools be a, house, a traditional household item so that they wouldn't get discovered by the Inquisition. Now, whether or not this is true, it's a good story. And it's also said that um, the broom, the, the besom, was a really good way of disguising that you had a wand because you put the, the um, business end of the wand inside the, the brush of the besom and nobody could see that it was a wand. And quite often the business end of the wand would be carved like a willy. So you obviously didn't want anybody finding that because it would be a dead giveaway. So, um, but anyway, the one, the, the broom has traditionally been seen as a riding pole or a steed for a witch who is flying to the Sabbath. Um, now, whether or not people actually literally um, went to the Sabbath, um, I very much doubt that they flew on brooms. Immensely cool, though, that would be. Um, so they must have been dreaming, um, possibly under the influence of uh, flying ointment, um, that they were flying to the Sabbath on a broom. So um, that's the traditional story of the broom, that it was the witch's steed. Um, but how it's used in modern witchcraft is generally to sweep the space of the circle um, before we do a ritual. And part of the reason for that is because um, quite often the spaces that we have to do ritual in are not permanently dedicated to ritual in the same way that a church is, right? Um, so we would first of all sweep the space and then um, cast the circle and then consecrate it with water and salt and incense. So when you, uh, when you sweep the circle, what you're doing is obviously getting rid of any actual physical dirt that may still be hanging around in the circle, but also um, metaphysical dirt. So it could be minor entities that are hanging around that you want to get rid of, or it can just be thoughts that you don't want to focus on while you're doing the ritual. So for example, if I'm thinking, did I get some more milk from the grocery store? or Oh, did I get enough cat food? Or whatever it happens to be. Um, you don't actually want those thoughts clattering up your head during the ritual, so you're just brushing them away. Now, to my mind, the most effective way to sweep a circle is that you're sweeping the space the same way as you would sweep, say, your kitchen or your living room if you were sweeping that with a broom, uh, which is to sweep all the dirt into the middle um, and then you would sweep it into a dustpan. So I don't literally use a dustpan when I'm sweeping the circle. Um, I just shush all the, the dirt out of the door. Um, but I have swept everything into the middle before I sweep it out the door. Um, so that's, uh, and, and I think it's important to use a magical tool the way, the same way that we would use its physical equivalent in the real world, right? Um, because we're, when we're using a magical tool, um, we're representing to our subconscious what's going on in the form of a symbol. And if you don't, you know, like I've seen people kind of dabbing the broom around the edge of the circle and I'm thinking, you know, my little subconscious is going, but you didn't sweep up all the dirt. And then I'm completely ruined for the rest of the ritual because I'm like, <laughs> there's still a bit of dirt hanging around in the middle of the circle, you know? Um, so yeah, <laughs> just a bit of a pet peeve of mine. Um, yes, so the interesting thing, obviously, you know, you've swept the circle, you've called the, you've cast the circle and you've called the quarters. Um, and we have to do that whenever we create a sacred space. Um, because if you're doing a ritual in your living room, um, then that's a, not always used as a pagan sacred space, so you want to keep from you consecrating it. Um, and we don't tend to see those types of rituals in churches for two reasons. Um, one, that they don't generally practice 
any kind of intensive magical stuff um, because they do liturgical ritual. Um, and the other reason is that the church has already been dedicated. If you look in a church or an old church, you will see that although the wall has been whitewashed, they have often left a circular bit with a cross in it. Uh, and those will be at the cardinal directions in the church um, because those are the consecration crosses where the church was consecrated. And so somebody actually went round and presumably called on the four archangels or whatever, whatever it is Christians do to these for these things um, to protect that space. Um, so, yeah, I think they I think they're practicing ceremonial magic, you know. Um, so um obviously you can in if you have a permanent temple space in your home you can have um like pentagrams of the quarters or uh, a picture of that represents the one of the four elements to you or whatever your sacred direction represents um so that's a nice thing to do um but anyway um the broom the sweeping with the broom is a really important part of setting up a space for ritual because it clears the space before you start and uh, interestingly uh, i was looking uh, at a website all about mumming so mummers plays and they used to sweep the space some of the mummers sides used to sweep the space with a broom before they started their performance so i wonder if we got it from that or they got it from us who knows? Um, so the other thing that's really interesting about the broom is the materials from which it's made. So a broom, the broom handle is traditionally made of ash and the, the ash wood represents Yggdrasil, the world tree. The bristles are traditionally made of hazel and I think that's part, partly because hazel is a really good um, flexible wood for sweeping with. Um, but also hazel, the hazel wands were supposedly used by the druids and they're also, hazel wands are also used for water divining. And then um, the binding that bound the bristles to the, the shaft um, would be made of willow, probably willow bark. And if you soak willow bark in water, then obviously it expands and then you wrap that around your your twigs to bind them to the shaft of the besom and as the water evaporates and the thing dries out then it will shrink and grip really tightly to your bristles that are bound around the 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 shaft um, and um, it's nice to have tools that you've made yourself or adapted for yourself and the interesting thing is that the shaft of the besom represents the masculine and the, the bushy bit represents the feminine. Um, so people have seen that as the union of male and female in the sense of heterosexual sex. Um, but it can also be seen as the union of male and female in a spiritual sense in as the divine androgyne. So, um, so you can see it as an androgynous symbol, um, which is very handy for non-binary people like me. And um, the goal, according to organisations like the Golden Dawn and other magical traditions, uh, the goal of the spiritual path is to become spiritually and androgynous. So the broom makes an excellent symbol for that goal. And um, I think that witchcraft has a strong queer magical strand in it. And so it makes sense that, that, that the broom should be one of our primary symbols. So that makes me happy. Okay, thanks for listening. Have a nice day. Blessed be.